You guys want to put some water on the tree? Two apple trees and a cedar tree, right? Tiny bear? The teddy bear got sick. <laughs> it's bird poop. Oh, don't touch me with muddy hands. It's not bird poop. It's not bird poop. <laughs> bird poop is white. Yeah, no, they can't touch it now. You want me to just pour it in there or just wait for it to soak in? Wait. We started first with bumblebees because they are fabulous pollinators. They are ten times more efficient than honeybees. These are the big guns. And this is the one that becomes most obvious in terms of, oh my gosh, where are they? Um, we also do the rare plant uh, enhancement uh, following the Endangered Species Act. We do uh, restoration using uh, locally native seed. We have a pollinator piece. Uh, and then we also do special forest products for personal use and also for commercial gain. We, re we regulate that. All those are in the umbrella of the plant program. Um, so relative to the cultivation of products, locally native is where we are charged to go. And that's a tricky term, but what it means is plants close to home, native plants close to home. Um, in other words, years ago, when we, let's say, decided to restore a tall grass prairie, we thought, hey, let's get those tall grass species from Manitoba. A long way between Illinois, <coughs> the original home of the tall grass prairie, to Manitoba. We now realize that local material has a much better chance of surviving and increasing and reproducing. So we're real interested in increasing the amount of locally native material available to us. Some we grow, some we buy. Um, and relative to tech transfer, we are learning how to grow these plants, how to harvest them, how to clean the seed, how to store the seed. And um, between all these, it's got to be 20,000 species of plants. In the lake states, it's got to be 3,000 species of plants. I can't go there. But what I can do is pick out key plants that we might need for restoration purposes or for wildlife or for, um, in the case of our relationships with the tribes, medicinal use or Marty's activities relative to the, uh, the, the diet uh, project. So we're looking and wanting to increase this material in terms of its availability so we can put that back on the land where we control for non-native invasive species when we control and, and um, make new roads and, and restore the sides of the roads with native material, or when we obliterate roads, which I think we're going to be doing more of, number one, because as an agency, we can't afford all those roads anymore. And it's probably useful in some scenarios. So we're going to need that material, and the tech transfer is, is is, a, is an option. I'm, I'm suggesting then that tribes consider what their needs are relative to the restoration on their land and partner with us 
for that local material. Um, the last thing that I want to do is have any one of us re have to reinvent the wheel. If somebody has a material or know-how that we share it together so that we can go where we need to go in terms of the restoration piece. We should be doing that because we're neighbors. We live right next door to each other and we both have the same goals in restoration. Um, the tech transfer has been really a neat uh, project for us and we've been able, five more minutes, we've been able <coughs> to get um, intra-agency agreement with this um, intertribal nursery program that the Western National Forest and the Western tribes originated, but we've been able to, to have a number of folks attend these. And, Karen, uh, two years? Yes. Two years now? Um, I, I think this is a wonderful opportunity for us. We can talk more about, about the opportunities there. helps it to keep it from getting root bound so that it will spread out. Do you smell that medicine? Yeah. You guys smell that? That's good.